Hey guys, what is up? Did you miss me? Um, I finally started making videos again. I've been busy for the past couple of weeks because I have been working on my ebook, which is live and has sold 265 copies at the time of this video. And uh, they'll probably, I'm, I'm, I bet someone might even buy one like while I'm making this video, which is insane. Like uh, it's amazing to go to sleep and wake up in the morning and find that 10 more people have bought it and then you know to be having lunch and then I get a pop-up on my phone that says somebody just bought it uh, it's a very um, it is genuinely quite humbling in some ways it is genuinely something that feels really really good it feels very wholesome and supportive and I, I feel I feel the love every time somebody buys a book I mean it could be that they're just buying it out of curiosity but even so like um, the message of my book is friendly ambitious nerd and uh, if you've been watching my videos i have a video about friendship i have a video about ambition i have a video about nerdiness and yet you know and um i'm, I'm not currently satisfied with the state of the book i and it's almost kind of by design so i conceived of the idea of friendly ambitious nerd um like early february so like february 2nd or 3rd i came up with the idea February 4th, I think, or 5th, I made it available for pre-order on Gumroad. And at that point, I hadn't written the book yet. But, you know, I knew that I had a lot of past writing, um, Twitter threads, blog posts that are about those topics. And, you know, I can talk about those topics indefinitely. You know, I could, I could talk about friendship for three hours. I could talk about nerdiness and ambition. I could just go on and on and on. And... And the challenge isn't really to have material. The challenge is to frame the material in a way that is sensitive to the reader, to frame it in a way that makes sense to people, in a way that's useful to people, that isn't overwhelming, that is, you know, it's a good introduction. It, it makes sense. It kind of brings you into the, the idea space. And I'm not satisfied with the job that I've done. So, you know, I'm going to include the link and you can buy it now if you want to. But I would actually recommend holding off until I make version 1.1 available, which I will be sending to everybody who has bought version 1. Because, um, I mean, it's just obviously the right thing to do. I don't expect people to buy the same ebook twice. But, um, yeah, I there are things that I have learned about the way I want to structure the ebook that I didn't know until after I saw it in print. So it's it's not available in print print yet. Um, hopefully, eventually, I will be able to do a print run. That would be cool. But I had to, you know, so it's a new format. So a book is a different medium. And, you know, I have gotten very good at Twitter threads over the past five or so years, four years, five years. And that takes experience, it takes tinkering, it takes screwing around, it takes making mistakes. And, you know, to some degree, because this is my first ebook, it isn't a good ebook by my standards. Like, uh, I, I do have people saying very nice and kind things, you know, they're, they're taking quotes that they like and they're sharing it on Twitter and they're saying, oh, you know, I'm really enjoying reading Visa's book, which I appreciate a lot. Thank you all, those of you who have done that. Uh, but, you know, I I am a reader before I'm a writer and when I read my own ebook I'm not satisfied. I don't think it's I don't think I feel like it's a little bit all over the place. I feel like um it has too many details in some parts, it has not enough details in other parts. I feel that the way I have laid the chapters out is not as thoughtful as it could be. I feel that um I don't go into enough detail on some things that I should. Um it's basically a kind of slip shot scatter shot um here's a bunch of my stuff that seems kind of vaguely relevant here you go it's like it's like a grab bag of stuff it's like um you know it's like newspaper clippings in a way it 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 there's a bunch of stuff but it doesn't form a coherent whole the way i want it to um you know i do feel that people got their money's worth i think for eight dollars but i'm not playing to make money I am playing to create something that I believe is a real contribution a real cultural contribution to the to nerd space right I want this to be a book that people feel 
really captures the essence of what it is to be a friendly, ambitious nerd. I want it to be a book that people read and go, wow, I have to buy this for my friend or I have to refer this to my friend because it's going to help them so much. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking through my book now, I, I, there are a couple of anecdotes where I talk about things that are about myself where I feel it's relevant. You know, I feel like there are times where you want to know where the author has been and where they're coming from so that you can then use that to make sense of everything else that they're saying. So I think that's relevant. Um, but I'm not sure I made that super clear. I also think that I mean some of my threads, some of my, some of those posts in the ebook, they are effectively just copy pasted Twitter threads with a little bit of embellishment. But that's not quite right either because you know there's something about the format of a Twitter thread which is like each thing is threaded. You're reading it kind of in a certain way. Um, just simply, it's it's a it's a medium translation. You know, it's a translation from information in one medium to another medium and when you do such information medium transfer it's an act an, an act of translation is required you know like a book doesn't perfectly become a movie you have to think about what it is about a movie that you can do only in a movie that you can't do in a book and you got to think about what are the things that you can do in a book you know i mean so the challenge for each artist in each medium is or each creator in each medium is to figure out how they can make the most of that medium. And I have not done that yet with ebooks. And I I anticipate that I'm gonna try and become an ebook artist in a way because it is it is a great format for putting together a reading experience that is more substantial than a blog post. Something that people are willing to spend money on. Like I've validated that hypothesis. And you know it's something people keep, it's something people might return to, it's something you know people can send around some of my friends ask me are you worried about piracy and i'm like mm, i would you know so I, I i'm internally consistent about this which is that you know i request that you do not pirate my book because i am broke right and i, I could use a bit of money but i am not gonna be harsh on anybody who pirates because I was a broke kid myself once and I used to pirate stuff and I do believe that in the long run um, ultimately ideas are currency and you know what the 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 real thing that I really want is for this book to move people you know and, and make a difference to people and if my ideas are sound and really good and, and correct and useful then people won't hoard the book to themselves and get value out of it and not give a fuck about me. I mean, there may be some small group of people who think that way, but the majority of true readers, readers who are meant to be a part of my audience, if they read my book, they will like my work, they will subscribe to my YouTube channel, they will subscribe to my tiny letter, and they will be interested in my subsequent work. And and it's very difficult to put a price tag on those things. And, you know... It, at the simplest level you could say it's free marketing sure I'm fine with that you know uh, I just want my ebook to be great uh, it, 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 it's interesting I guess this has been a has been a kind of um, a line in the sand there's now my life before I had an ebook available for sale for, uh, you know and my life after I have an ebook available for sale and another mini like you know that that feels like a, the first threshold I have been holding back on doing a lot of marketing for it because, you know, I think right now the people who are buying my book, they are mostly of my audience. They are people who already follow me on Twitter or maybe maybe some of them are their friends. But um, I'm not going to do like an intense marketing push until I have improved the book to the point where I feel that it's good enough, that it stands on its own merit, that I am confident sharing with the people who have the highest taste. Which is, and I, I put myself in that list. You know, I'm not impressed, and I would like to be impressed reading my own ebook. I believe I can reach that stage. You know, so like, I think it was Da Vinci who said that art is never finished; it's only abandoned. Um, true to some degree, but you know, I think you can abandon it at forty percent, sixty percent, eighty percent, ninety five percent, maybe. And you know, the between eighty percent satisfaction and ninety five percent satisfaction for the artist, like the vast majority of people might not be able to tell the difference. But six, the difference between 40, 60, and 80%, I think it's very clear. Uh, 
and I feel that this is at maybe 50% capacity. I want to bring it to at least 70 to 80%. And, you know, I will abandon it when I feel that um, the, they're diminishing returns to further editing it and further restructuring it. I think right now there are tremendous returns to be had from restructuring the book. I think there are ways of rearranging the information that will really make a difference. Anyway, um, it's only 10 minutes. I think I'm getting better at talking about what I mean in a pretty short amount of time. I hope. We'll see. Um, what else can we squeeze into this video? Let's talk for another five minutes. Um, it has been a very eye-opening experience to work on an ebook. Uh, I have, you know, so I was, how I did it, I was typing it directly into Google Docs and uh, I only learned like way too late that you can have page breaks, meaning that um, each uh, so if you press command plus enter, whatever is below the cursor goes to the next page. And, you know, I believe that's consistent with it, what, regardless of the lines before it. And so I used to manually do line breaks and that was, oh uh, my God, I can't believe it. Now that I know how to do page breaks, I'm amazed that I ever did use line breaks to create page breaks, which, you know, then break when you move stuff around. Um, what else? I changed the, so there's the page setup and the page layout the default is letter format, which is kind of wide and kind of short. And I guess it's meant for like, if you wrote a letter to somebody else and it's like long sentences, but you know, if you want to do a book, like you want the sentences to be a little bit narrower so that it's easier to read, you know, it's fewer words per line. So you can go from line to line faster. Uh, I think that is a superior reading experience. And that wasn't obvious to me when I first published it as, um, in version 1.0, it was published as a letter, which is wider. And just as one of those things where I was reading my own ebook and I didn't like what I was reading. I, I, I liked the words because they're my words. Well, I have criticisms of the words as well, but it's a separate issue, right? But like, I didn't like the experience of reading it and the sentences are so long, but I didn't quite, it didn't quite occur to me what exactly I should be doing to fix it until I think my wife told me, why don't you experiment with the page layout? So I'm like, wow, I owe another debt to her. And uh, I increased the line spacing a little bit more so that it's not so claustrophobic. So I think the reading experience just got better. Um, I shipped it before I could do more highlighting and bolding. So, you know, when I tweet, I can't highlight or bold things, but the PDF format lets you highlight and bold things. And, you know, so you want to use all the tools at your disposal, right? Like um, one of the things, you know, I was, I was paying attention to Steven Spielberg movies and one of the things that Steven Spielberg does in his movies that's great is that he'll have two characters speaking to each other. And then imagine me, my head, my head, my head is a third character. And he'll have two characters speaking in front of the camera. And then the third character will come in. So you will see, you will see the third character on screen, but they are not introduced yet in the dialogue. So if you're reading just the dialogue, if you're reading in a book, Right, you will see maybe John spoke to Sam, Sam spoke to John, and maybe they'll then say, you know, Daniel was in the distance and he, sh he came forward. It's slightly clunky, but, you know, Spielberg realizes that when you're filming something, and maybe he learned this from Kurosawa or you know, wh whoever, uh, when you're filming something, there's a foreground and there's a background, and the background is a thing that you can use to foreshadow things that come into the foreground. Right, there's one great example in Jaws where um, the police commissioner, the guy in charge, the like protagonist, the guy who's kind of responsible for trying to catch the, the guy in charge of the beach. I can't the guy, right? The, the guy in Jaws who is trying to solve this problem. He's just sitting at his desk and he's like exhausted. You can see that he's exhausted and he's like having a glass of drink. And what what? What um, Spielberg does is he he has um, somebody come to the door. And so, you know, imagine imagine I'm sitting here right now, right? And and someone comes to the door and like you hear a knock on the door. And then, you know, there's, there's like you see my wife outside and she's talking to somebody. And then, so the camera is still focused on the guy sitting here at his dinner table and his glasses here. But you, the 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 viewer, get to see that Somebody is in the distance. They are. They are having a conversation. Oh, like you know, is Mister So and So in? And she's like, Oh yeah, come in. And then she comes in, and he comes in, and the camera moves. And you know, 
and and so the camera moves and you know the guy's changing here but it's a one shot so you're still seeing the same shot and as i'm saying this i'm realizing that i'm trying to explain this to you verbally but actually what i could do is i could put in the spielberg shot into the video and you can see for yourself what's happening and uh, i think i'm gonna do that so that you can see it i don't know if i'm gonna get an, if that's gonna be like a copyright infringement or something but you know just to demonstrate what i mean because um that would be me using youtube as a medium better than let's say text because explaining it in text is so tedious and you know like i'm used so I could use my own door and I could, you know, kind of talk about it and then you can see how using video and gestures is a way of talking about things that is, you can do things that you can't do with just text. But even better still is if I could pull in the footage and just show you, right? And then that's, um, so I mean that, and I say all of these things kind of just to talk about mediums in general and I'm thinking a lot about what it means to transition from one medium to another because, you know, I started out writing blog posts and then tweets and then now I'm making videos and I just want to be very media, medium savvy, be literate, be good at it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep working on my ebook, but now that it's been published, um, I, I'm going to start making videos every day again, I hope. And let's just end this one here. Um, it's good to be back. I hope you guys are happy to see me again and uh, done.